Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews episode 53 about the Delta 4 launch waiting just around the corner. Delta 4 will launch in its M Plus configuration, which stands for Medium Plus Strap On Boosters. In this case, it will be two, and on top is the slightly modified Delta 3 second stage. On top of that are two satellites for the Air Force Space Command, which get covered by a 4 meter wide fairing. A special thing to note is the core booster engine. It will be the first time the specific variant of the Delta IV is propelled by the upgraded RS-68A. It has a little more thrust and is a little more efficient, increasing the rocket's payload capacity by roughly 300 kg, summing up to over 12 tons. The launch is scheduled for August 19th and the one hour long launch window opens at 4.47 UTC. That's just after midnight locally at the Cape Canaveral Space Center, but if you are for example living in Melbourne, Australia, you can enjoy it for breakfast. Although it's probably not that tasty. Anyways, shortly after Delta IV has cleared the tower, it will head eastwards, as usual not only avoiding inhabited areas, but also use the Earth's rotation as an additional boost. 93 seconds into the flight, the boosters will burn out and it will take 7 more seconds to separate them away. This is done to get a little more distance from the coast so they can safely splash down. Safely at least for us and not for the boosters themselves. Water gets rock solid at such speeds and will of course destroy them. The payload consists as mentioned of two satellites for the Air Force Space Command. These belong to the Geosynchronous Space Situational Awareness Program or GSSAP for short. What the name already indicates is, these are used to get aware of what is actually orbiting our planet. Many satellites are of course known, but some get also launched secretly. Governments are always curious to know what other countries do and the US is of course no exception. GSSAP will not orbit in a geosynchronous orbit itself, but rather a little lower or higher in a so called near geosynchronous orbit. Like this, the satellite can overtake or get overtaken by others and maneuver closer to get an idea of what they do. I don't really know it, but I could imagine these are also equipped with radio jammers to eventually render satellites useless for an extended period of time. What such a jammer does is it simply radiates random noise on all radio frequencies. A signal like a voice for example can't travel through space alone because there is no air which could carry a sound wave. Instead, the signal is carried by radio waves, and to obtain the voice out of such a wave, you basically connect to the amplitudes. Now, if you add very strong noise to it, this becomes impossible. Modern systems are of course a little more complex than this, which makes them much more robust not only to jammers, but also allows to send more and more data at once. To give you a brief look into what is going on, do you remember the two-dimensional coordinate system from school? Well, to make it a little bit more messy, we not only send one signal, but at multiple ones on top of each other, separated by a higher mean voltage. But what really makes it obscure is the third dimension added. Signals no longer just propagate in a certain direction, they now also have an orientation. Like this, hundreds of signals are all added up into a single wave, which is then sent to the receiver. This one now really has a really bad time, because it has to split them all apart again. If you thought math is not needed in reality, just ask the communication engineers who developed LTE for example. They use exactly such a system which is called Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. Now before I go on, let me give a little shout out to my patrons. These people support my little crowdfunding campaign and while it's completely optional, it definitely helps not only financially, but also motivates a lot. Thanks. Meanwhile, the second stage separated, the fairing has been jettisoned and the second stage just finished its burn to get to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. The satellites will stay attached because the mission goal is to get them into the correct orbit directly. The spacecraft will coast to the apoapsis, the highest point in its orbit relative to Earth, where it will start its final burn before payload separation. Once separated, the satellites will move to their positions on their own using their built-in thrusters. Okay. That shall conclude KNews episode 53 about Delta 4 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.